Hey guys, Turkey Hunter here. Got an update from my computer. Got it in the mail yesterday. Um, we're going to be building this bad boy today. It's the Master Case H500P Mesh White with two 200 millimeter RGB fans. This is the box it shipped in. It's the box for the case, so you know it's fairly good. I got my trusty knife here to cut the box open. I'm gonna have to move my coffee. That is the actual case, or the actual box for the case. Cable management, yay! And this looks like a lot of the extra pieces and stuff they have for the case. It comes with handles. Doesn't make it any easier to get it out of the box. Because there's still stuff in the box. I guess that means I can uh, load up my computer and take it with me because I got a bag for it now. Grocery shopping in one trip. There it is. It's got two 3.0s, two 2.0s, headphone jack, microphone jack, reset button, power button. Power button's kind of cool. It's got the cooler master shape. And there's the two fans on the front. And I can mount my GPU vertically. They use double sticky tape. I don't know if I'm supposed to stick it somewhere or what. I don't know. It's the famous button for the RGB. I'm going to assume this, I don't know, I don't know what this is for. Cleaning cloth for the glass. <laughs> Screws and offsets. Guys, and some more connections for, I think this is for the RGB. Take this off. It's not going to let me.
if I turn it the right way. It might. Should have left that knife, knife over here. Redneck screwdriver, flathead. It's a quarter turn. You don't have to twist the whole thing out. It's only a quarter turn. <clears throat> is it does have little hooks on there so if you need to clean the glass you can just let it sit there you don't have to take it all the way out to clean it I should have a screwdriver here but these come out so I can move them wherever because my GPU is going to be vertically mounted right here. So there's cable management back here. Let's flip it around and see. Alright, we got a screwdriver. This has got the hooks on it too. And there's good cable management back here. There's all these clear up into the sides. There's places to put your cable management. And there is my RGB wires. All zip tied together. No, twist tied, not zip tied. Silica gel. Don't eat it. Don't let your cats eat it. Don't let your kids eat it. And these are the LG RGB plugs for the fans. <clears throat> and they are already cable managed behind this. So all we gotta do is just plug everything into it. Move some stuff. I'm gonna shove this back in here for just a minute. One thing that I like about it Aside from the big fans on the front that are going to light up all cool colors, is this. It's completely covered down here in the basement, so you can hide all your wires down there. There's rubber back here, so when you run your cables through, they're a little bit less visible. There's not just big gaping holes for them to stick through. And right here, I don't know if you can see, but these are already routed to go down back here in the back. I think we're about ready to take my old computer apart, put it all in here. Hey everybody, it's back with Messery here. We're going to talk a little bit more about this case. Because I'm still learning about computers and stuff. So, he's, he's here to help me learn. So, what I really like about this case is this cable management. It's very hidden, um, as you can blatantly see. There's a panel here, hides a lot of Sorry, the cable management. I missed that. Could 
it's nice. And you can hear Siri, I sat on Siri. I, iPhones. So, the motherboard tray, this is a plastic cover back here. There's mesh in the front, great airflow. 200 millimeter RGB fans in the front. You have support for up to 360 millimeter cooling, whether it's full custom or AIO. You can put a 360 on the top and the front, even with the 200 millimeter fans in the front. There's plenty of room. Really like that design. So the way you get back here to route all your cables for your motherboard Got him. is Got you have two Phillips screws. Don't mind the background noise. It is still, you know, quarantine. So we have Critter kids, in the background. Kids are home. He's playing Shell Shocker. Shell Shocker. <clears throat> kids version of Call of Duty with eggs. So this is the tray. It is hinged, so you swing it out, you lift up just a little bit, and it comes out. And it's There's metal. also parkour in it. So. Well, these are already twisted together. We'll probably trade that oh, for a zip on. tie. <sighs> Another really nice feature that this panel here hides. Is down below it's probably hard to see but you can have two hard drives either 7200 rpm drives if you're still running those we are on some of our stuff because we have not tried to consolidate data and transfer it over yet oh, come on. or you can run two two and a half inch drives there we flip this case around we'll move that around we'll go ahead and flip this case around On the front here, you have your power supply shroud, and right where the vertical GPU mounts are, you have SSD trays as well that are removable, and the thumb screws stay attached. Very thumb, nice feature. The thumb screws stay <coughs> attached to all of them. They stay attached to the panel, the front panel, the back panel. They stay attached here, so you don't have to worry about losing your thumb drives because, you know, I'm sure we've all done that. Thumb screws? Thumb screws, not drives. Thumb screws. So this is a really well-built case. There is a lot of plastic on the case. Um, on the front panel, there is only mesh, and on these sides, there is mesh. But on the top, it is uh, polycarbonate. Uh, it's tinted polycarbonate. It's not clear, so that really kind of helps it. I do like that it does have support for up to an EATX motherboard. So that's one of them super large boards if you're into that. Um, you can run a mini ITX in here, a micro ATX, a full size ATX board, which is what we're going to be running. Um, the power supply shroud is very nice. It is removable. It does have two screws that are mounted down below. They are black. I do like the contrasting black and white inside of this case. It's really going to make it very nice if you have a lot of RGB lighting um, you'll be able to show off your internal components quite well and I think the white will help gotcha. with that a little bit more and this is supposed to slide over so we're gonna see how well that <clears throat> oh, looks like we have ah! some more screws critter please keep it down okay. we do Oh, look at there. Screws galore. Alright, we're going to get rid of this twist tie menagerie of wires here. Because we're not going to use twist ties. We're going to use actual zip ties. We got zip ties. So this is going to be all of your front pa panel headers. Okay, you have your RGB for your fans. Uh, let's and these see. are power, right? Oh, let's see. What do we got here? Okay, that's another fan header. This is your front panel adapter, so you got your power LED, positive, negative, HDD, LED, reset switch, power switch. Then you have your 2.0, or sorry, 3.0 USB header. Come on. You have your 2.0 USB header. Oh. And. COVID 19 kit, kill. Your HD audio. Next, we're going to remove that metal panel there. 
that is also hinged on the front so it will slide out from the bottom and out the top. There's that. That would be if you're using uh, an EATX motherboard because it is extended and it will come clear over here. And in order to slide this, we remove, well, we don't got to remove that fully. But this one back here needs to be removed. You can take this one out and I think you can slide this. Clear back? I don't know. And this is my first time exploring this case, but it's really so nice. I think, does that line up? Mm -mm. I can't see. Yeah, it lines up right here. You can slide it back to there. So, we'll just flip this around really quick. And then you've got a little extra space right here. I mean, you'd have to remove your hard drive tray in order to... Do we want it turned around? Yeah. I don't want to... We're going to take out this power supply shroud, which is these screws back here. It's a really beautiful case, it really is. I'm sorry the lighting is not the greatest. We're not to the point where we can upgrade and have a full studio just yet for unboxings and everything like that. But go ahead and like and follow Tricky so that we can go ahead and get our subscribers and followers in. And there, you you can completely remove your power supply shroud. And there's right here where it'll line up, and there is actually holes in the bottom where the screws will correspond so that you can have that little bit of extra space. So you can't see it, but there's another screw here um, for the HDD drive. They do come out. Um, you place your two and a half inch drive in there. It does have mounts for your HDD. There are two of them, they just slide right out, kind of like a hot swap, I mean it's not a perfect hot swap because you still have to unplug your SATA cables and your SATA power and your SATA data. So, but if you want to put in the 360 red, you can go ahead and put that right in the front you'd have to pull off your front panel here. We'll demonstrate that, but this just, if you just, if you just go ahead and grab it. It should pop off. It's actually really stiff. Come on. Oh, can't do that. How does this come on? Come on. Oh, it's hinged. Is there a button? There it is. Okay, so it's hinged. See there? It's hinged. And you just pull it up. We'll place that on top. It's made out of plastic. Now you can see those big glorious 200 millimeter fans. Okay, so to put in your 360, you'd pull off your 200 millimeter fans. You'd place in your 360 millimeter cooler behind there, bolt it in. It does have a spot that you can bolt it in. Throw those in the bottom. As you can see, there's your cage that you can bolt in your 360 as well as up on top. We are going to be bolting the 240 millimeter AIO up top. We don't want it in the front, so that's how we're going to run that. And the top as well comes off. I really do like that hinge design on the front. It's really. Okay, wait. Really Before nice. we go any further. Uh oh. There's the famous plastic peel. Doesn't it sound is. like the glass. Getting phone calls and all types of other stuff. Looks like we got a thumb screw here on the back, so it's factory tightened. Imagine that. Thumb screw comes out, looks like it just lifts straight up. So there's the top piece, it does have mesh along the side, very nice. I like that there's the plastic incorporated into it because this 
metal is really solid, but then putting the extra plastic on will what will help with the weight quite a bit. <clears throat> so to get your radiator tray, which is black, there are four Phillips head screws, and they appear to be like five and a half millimeter heads on them. And I'm just really glad that I've got Backwoods Messer here to help me with this because. He's taking stuff apart that uh, I wouldn't even know how to put it back together. So it's a good thing he's going to help me put this thing back together. So there's the radiator tray. You mount, like I said, up to a 360 millimeter AIO in there. So you, and there's actually enough support underneath there. Hold that. There's enough support underneath your top cover that you can have fans above, so you can do a push-pull configuration with this. It's very well built, very well thought out. It's a beautiful case. So without further ado, since we have it all tore apart and we're ready, we're going to tear apart the old Cooler Master case and we're going to get it put in here. When we're all done, we'll come back and we'll show you the first fire up. Well, we'll do a quick walk around of how everything's set real quick and then we'll do the first fire up. So we'll see you in the next part. All right, on to the rest of this. We finally got it put back together. Uh, Backwoods Messery helped me put it together yesterday. He had to leave for work. I brought it in. I got it all hooked up, got it connected. And my one of my fans wasn't working. He said I could mess with it or I could leave it. didn't matter. Well, then I noticed my... RGB on my motherboard has a flicker now, so I consulted Hammered Spit and he suggested a couple things. It still has a flicker. I'm not sure what's going on there, but for a couple hours yesterday after Backwoods Messery went to work, I had this thing apart and back together and apart and back together. I put it back together the first time, come in, I've got fans that have RGB that are not spinning. I've got fans that are spinning with no RGB. And so I took it back in and I took it apart again. And I sat for a good couple of hours trying to figure out the cables on this thing. And if you are not a computer person, if you've never done this kind of work before, you are looking for a challenge with the Cooler Master case. Because it, it is just so many different connections. I uh, have this little panel in the back that's supposed to help hide some of that cable management and it's supposed to help keep that under control. I could not cable manage and shut this at the same time. So this is left out and the back panel just hides it all. I can't see much of it in here. Um, once I finally got everything put back together, got it in here, after I checked it in the kitchen, before I brought it back in again, I had all my fans working, I messed with the button to get the colors, which if I want to change the colors again, I have to take the back panel off, take the cover off, and then switch the colors manually on that little controller that's in the back. That's kind of a pain. I wish there was software for that. Make it a lot easier, just like the IQ software. I can change the colors on my keyboard and my mouse with the click of a couple buttons. Whereas if I want to change it on my case with the Cooler Master fans, I've got to use the controller in the back. And these fans, I can only seem to get them on static color. I can't get the rainbow. I clicked through all the colors, went to off. I could not find rainbow on there. So what I have now is I've got these two fans at blue. I've got the fans on the back, the on the back of the radiator for the push pull. Those are rainbow. And then the two fans that I put in the top are two different colors doing their own thing. 
and I have no idea how to get that all synced together. My um, my RAM and my CPU cooler are somewhat matching with the ones on the back of the radiator. They are doing the rainbow, but they like everything is doing its own thing. So there's just lots of colors. Nobody's getting along, but whatever. I got RGB. Um, but the main thing was the cable management. It was absolutely awful, and especially someone that's never really put a computer together before. <laughs> yeah, that that was that was great. Um, I did run it yesterday. I did use it um, to play some Call of Duty last night. I am seeing anywhere from 5 to 10 degrees cooler on my GPU temp. I don't know if that's because I have it vertically mounted or if it's just because of the case. Either way, my GPU is running cooler, which means it's probably going to last a little bit longer because the higher temps wear it out quicker. Um, if you want to come on over here and and see this. So I've got my GPU right here, right here at the front. I've got that extension going over to the motherboard. The It's not the greatest in there, but you know, it, it works. I don't have the mount for it. I will be getting that at a later time, um, but it's a light enough GPU that it can rest there for now. Um, all Everything's hidden in the basement or behind the back. There's not a whole lot that's sticking out and, you know, I tried to actually see if there was ways that I could route that controller towards the front so that I could just remove the front panel to try and change the RGB and I just couldn't figure out how to do it. I'm not saying it can't be done. I'm saying I couldn't figure out how to do it, but you know, I'm a noob with computers, so it's, it's bound to happen. Um, Right now, I'm going to have to say I'm completely satisfied with the case. I absolutely love it. I think it looks awesome and amazing. And I happen to have this little uh, Lego sitting on my desk. It's been sitting here for I don't know how long. And it actually... Oh, it won't focus. I was trying to focus in on it. but It actually works perfectly right there. To open that up and the only reason that I picked that up and used that is because it's not a typical thumb draw or thumb screw that screws out all the way it has a quarter turn on it the quarter turn locks it in the quarter uh, the other way unlocks it so it is a little bit stiffer than my other case it I my other case I can use my thumbnail this one I cannot so as long as the children don't take this back and as long as I don't lose it, this is probably how I'm going to be getting into my case with this little thing here. Um, I would recommend having something that you can get into if you get this case. I would recommend having something that you can twist that thumb screw with because it is a little stiff. Um, other than that though, I really like the case. So if you like what you're seeing, give a like, give a subscribe. Um, like I said before, shout out to Hammered Spit, shout out to Backwoods Messery. Um, I'm going to be trying to stream. Um, you'll probably see me running around with uh, Insanity Games or Bantadoodle or Soul Eater or Petri Ducky. Um, we are going to try... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see what happens tonight. We might get a stream up. Um, but shout out to all those guys. Check out their pages. Give them a like. Give them a subscribe. And without further ado, we're going to finish this off. And we'll see you on the next one.